Well, we have that rock that we picked up in the intertidal section, and I have Dr. Dorothea Bender, who is a specialist in marine algae. And one of the greatest demonstrations of biodiversity on coral reefs is just how many species you can get off one boulder. So that's what we're going to do now, is just see how many organisms we can get off this simple boulder we've collected in the shallows uh, at Heron Island. So let me just get the right. boulder. Right. Oh. Now, this is the way it was sitting. I'm not going to put it down because we've got some delicate creatures on the side. What we can see here is, what's all this algae that we've got here? We've got several different species. We've got sargasm here, which um, is a brown alga that can grow very high. We've got a green alga as well, which is, I guess, easily seen here. And that's halometer, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. the calcifying green alga. And um, we also have another brown alga that also calcifies very lightly, though. That is okay. Padina. Padina, right. It That's actually right. calcifies as well. It does. Yeah. And there's also some more um, green alga here yeah. that I think would be Budlea. Uh-huh. Now, this, this benthic microalgae that grows on coral reefs is very important, isn't it? It's, it's very and, important. And what is benthic microalgae? Benthic microalgae, well, we usually refer to um, benthic algae with several terms as the macroalgae, microalgae, or the endolithic, epilithic um, algal matrix. And that's basically algae that cover surfaces that are um, bare, that have just been bleached oh, after okay. coral bleaching, right. or um, when a crown of thorns has eaten um, the coral tissue of the skeleton. That's when the algae and other organisms move in very quickly. Okay. And that's what you can see here. It's very fine algal structures there. Right. So um, if I have this rock by day, what's happening to oxygen? You'll have a very high oxygen concentration. And Coming out of the? Of the rock, because there's also algae within this rock. So there's yeah. algae within and on top. And you can often see oxygen bubbles actually coming up wow, from these rocks. Wow. And then at night time, of course, the opposite happens, right? You don't have any light. Very true. High CO2 and very low oxygen environment. Right. So I can see also there's some animals here. Here's a, a oh, decorator right. crab. We've got a one, one, one of these guys. Now you can just, whoops. Ooh. Ooh. There oh, you, you got the tweezers? Yeah, you can just rescue him there. Yeah. Okay, now just going to grab him and put him in a bowl and we'll have a look at him in the lab. So, of course, this is just the top side. If we turn it over, we can see the animals that have been hiding below. The first one that I see immediately are these terabellid worms. Now, these worms have long tentacles which they use to um, detritally feed across the sand surface. So often they'll be in this burrow and they'll have their tentacle maybe a metre or two away, That's collecting right. particles. Interestingly, those um, tentacles are actually toxic to some fish. Oh, is so that they right? deter the feeding at the right, same so time. Right, so it's not a free meal. That's right. <laughs> and you can see they're sandy tubes. I'm just thinking if we try and get one of these worms out, we can put him back and he'll be happy. Here we go. Okay, so if we just help this little guy over, all right, and we'll put him in his burrow. Oh, there's a lot of... Oh, very good, Dora. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we'll have a look at some of the other cre creatures here. So there's quite a family of these uh, terabellid worms. We, now we can see an interesting alga there, or is that an ascidian? I think that is... An ascidian, is it? It may it also be a sponge. It's a sponge, yeah. So we can actually see sponges. Here's a sponge. That's there's right. a sponge as well. We've even got sort of, I think, some bryozoans down there. That's right. So what are we up to? We're probably up to about 10 species so far. Definitely. I can okay. see more algae from here as well. There's some red algae oh, right. down here. So yes. that's not always red though, is it? You know, it can be bleached no. by the sun. No, yeah. exactly. So red algae often look green or greenish yeah. because of the chlorophyll that's also within their tissue. Right. So that is a sponge. Yep. You can see the sponge there. Just have a quick look up close. All of this area here is a, is a tough, leathery sponge. So we've really done a bit of a surface scan here, but it's probably now time to just open it up because there are a lot of animals that are actually burrowing into the, the coral skeleton. I should say that this is a lump of coral that was once growing. It's died and it's been invaded by all these different species. So let's have a look. Ooh, that's oh, that's oh, good. Look, oh, look at that. That's great. Um, a, a pair of pistol shrimp. Um, if we can get the tweezers, I don't know whether you can... I'm going to bring that over here. Yep. Oh, good. 
Now they're amazing creatures. Look, look at the size of that claw, which is the top end of his body. It's about half his body length. Wow. Now they live in little social colonies, the, and their uh, there's another. Alpheus is the oh, genus. That went back oh, he inside. went back in there, <laughs> right? So he would have a whole bunch of uh, places to hide there. What else have we got there? Oh, there's a chitin, a little tiny chitin. Yes. That's a type of mollusk. Put that down there. We'll have a look at that under the microscope. Um, okay. Well, let's see what oh, else we got here. Oh, there's a crab what? underneath. Oh, that's a swimmer crab. Trying to it's, get um, away. I don't know the genus of that guy, but he, um, he's got paddles on his back flippers, uh, his back legs. All right, so what else have we got here? We've got, oh, what's that there? There's another piece of, what's that? It's a little piece of sponge, it's a sponge. So have a look oh, at that wonderful. later. It's a little tiny sponge of some sort. What's that? That's something. Oh. That's a, uh, a limpet. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. There's a goby. Get the goby up there. Oh, a hermit crab. Put him in there. Uh, a micro mollusk. Oh, here we go. Wonderful. This is a, an amphipod, and they're great detrital feeders. Um, he's a bit small for the... We'll have to look at him later, but let's see. They love algae. <laughs> That's right. right. There he is, and swimming around. Okay, so let's continue here. Now there's a lot of creatures that are, uh, a lot of creatures that are boring into the skeletons, and yeah, you can see there's another sponge. Oh, oh here's yeah. another crab. Now. I suppose we'll just end up counting the lot and get our species list together. Here's another. You can see that. Oh, wonderful. Look at this. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's, a, it's a polychaete or? worm. Oh, yes. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I've got him. Where is he? I'll oh, put him I in there. It. Oh, that's a, a polychaete. So this guy is usually a hunter. They're going through the, um, the rubble and around rocks like this and they'll try and find small creatures which they'll eat. Um, they have often some jaws at one end of their body. Oh, right. They have parapodia which are like little paddles that they walk along with. And, and polychaetes are very numerous on coral reefs. There's hundreds of species. Now here's a, here's a worm that's burrowing through the rock, through the calcium carbonate. And you can see we've broken his burrow in half. And I'm not sure we can get him out. Uh, no, I don't think we can. Yeah. But that's, that's an example of, of these internal bioeroders, which take the calcium carbonate that corals put down, and they just eventually sort of burrow into it, and eventually the coral fragments become very brittle to storms, they mm -hmm. break off from reefs. And then over time, they become part of the reef matrix, and of course, we've got our very important red, al uh, red yes. coralline algae, which are everywhere. Is that red coralline? That is a red coralline, isn't it? Yeah. I think so. And there's also some here. Yep. So that's just growing out over and it glues the fragments together. Okay, this is, this is more exciting than going on it a is. safari in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else we've got. Oh, more pistol shrimps. This is quite a... Oh, look how many there are. Oh, wow. In different types. We've got more of those tar tarabellids. Um, do you want to try and grab him? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, there's two of them, yeah. Oh, there's three of them, here we go. Oh. This is obviously a nice little colony. Uh, in fact, they might even be different species here. I think so, they look very different. Yeah. Okay, so what else have we got here? This is breaking up, it's very brittle. I mean, if this were coral skeleton, it'd be very hard to break up. But there you see we've oh, yes. gone through a sponge. This is a sponge that's invested itself into the skeleton. Mm -hmm. Um, here's another terabellid worm, we might put we him put over him there. We put him here, yes. Um, oh, here we go. A oh, boring bivalve. Wonderful. Yeah, no, that's a nice uh, red-eyed crab. Put him over there. Um, I'm going to try and get that guy out, because this is a very important group of bioeroders. 
We can see if we can. See, oh, see how yes, you went yes. back in? So we may have to... It's funny how we can do this. Oh. I'm thinking, how do we get at him without hurting him? What I'll do is I'll come from behind with a gentle tap. Okay, and we have his burrow, and we have him. There we go. Wonderful. So it's a boring bivalve. So they erode into the skeleton, mm -hmm. and they can make coral skeletons rather weak. These will be all returned to the ocean afterwards, but uh, it's great to study them in the lab. It's nothing like being on a coral reef and you know, really understanding how much life's there. More sponges. They're quite fascinating. These sponges are the first step in multicellularity. And so sponges have cells that live together in colonies that are specialized, but they have a unique feature which you don't find elsewhere in multicellular organisms like mm -hmm. ourselves. And that is that you can de-aggregate the sponge, take all the cells apart from each other. And if you leave them in a dish, they will reform the sponge. Oh, wow. That's so the amazing. equivalent would be is taking a mouse and putting all the <laughs> mouse cells into a dish and hoping that a mouse would appear. Well, that doesn't happen. That's right. But this is really one of the first steps. It's a very primitive arrangement of tissues, which later on becomes uh, the higher invertebrates and, of course, our phylum, uh, the vertebrates. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's like a little bivalve of sorts. Yes. I don't know whether we can probably put him aside for the moment. All right, now, um, a sponges. We need some sponges. Well, here's a little cowrie. Nice. A little cowrie shell. Um, more alpheus. That's uh, sponge. Oh, look at that. That's one of those gamaridians. Oh. Isn't, it, isn't that a, uh, that's a sand hopper, isn't it? I think it is. I think so. Oh, yep. beautiful. Now, a lot of them, are specialised for living with sponges. So that little guy there is quite an unusual little beast. And he just came out of there. He was living inside the sponge. Um, oh, what's that there? There's something else there. There is a flatworm, I think. Is that there's something there? Oh. What is oh. that? Oh. oh, it's a brittle star, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's a brittle star. A tiny one. They're echinoderms. So look at this. We're just, this is a sponge. We should have a look at that. Um, Can perhaps put them in here. Put the sponges there. Um, I'm going to have a look and see if I can find any more of these other amphipods that are living there. Right. Okay, well we're almost finished here and we'll take some representative lumps up to have a look in the lab. Um, lucky last strike. Oh yes, here is oh, a wonderful. polychaete. And we need to get him out. This one's... Tweezers? Yeah, tweezers, yeah. Um, put him over there. Very large. Here we go. Oh, look at those parapodia. Beautiful. Those little paddles down the side of the uh, side of the body. Wow. Oh, and there's another one there. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, wow. Oh, these are those bristle worms. And you can see why That's they're called right. bristle worms. There's another one, the whole colony here. This is a nice case where you've got a hole made by some boring animal that's been grinding away. And the polychaetes have now gone to live in that hole. Um, so there's a real lot going on in this rock. Okay, should we do a count? Yes, please. Um, so, how many have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different animals there. Mm -hmm. One uh, different different species of crab. So there's, and actually, that's a different one as well. So there's three, four, five. That's seven. That's fifteen. Um, we've got a few sponges there. We've got yes. our snails. We had two snails, three snails actually. So there's four, five animals there, and we've got a bowl of terabellids. So what's that? That's 19, 20, and I reckon I could count probably, oh, at least five different types of sponges. Just got another worm. Another worm? Oh, and it's a different type. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Oh, well, that's a different type again. Have we got the other tweezers? 
That's an interesting one. Look, it's got a bulbous head, I think. Yes, it yeah, does. It does. Wow. And, it was, and it was expanding it. So, so I would say there's at least 40 organisms here living in one boulder on a coral reef. And of course, that really highlights this idea that coral reefs have over a million species that live in and around their, their, um, the ecosystem. And that's an extraordinary number that comes very close or exceeds what we see in terrestrial ecosystems like rainforests. But let's take these upstairs. The story isn't finished yet. Let's go and have a look at these under the microscope because it's really fascinating to see the structures. Let's go. Well, one of the creatures we found in the rock uh, is a polychaete worm, which are in the phylum Annelida. And they're the segmented worms which have tiny little paddles on the side of their body, uh, which are the parapodia. And these are the ways they swim and walk around. Now at one end, the head end, you'll find a series of sensory structures, such as little tentacles and sometimes some quite formidable jaws. Uh, and there's a huge variety of polychaete worms on the reef. Some are hunters like this one here, uh, but many others are filter feeders. They actually f have little uh, tufts of, of tentacles around their mouth that they put up into the water column. They can be quite beautiful. They're often called Christmas tree worms and they'll filter uh, particles out of the, the water. Then there are others that are detrital feeders um, and we've got one of those over there and I'm going to put him under the scope next. Here's another type of polychaete worm. Uh, it's a, from a family called the Terabellidae. And the way the Terabellids feed is that they live in a burrow and they put these long sticky tentacles out across the substrate. So the worm would be in a burrow here. It might have its tentacles, you know, a metre or more away. And it collects tiny particles and brings it to the mouth. And so if we put it under the microscope, we can actually also see uh, respiratory structures, we can see a whole range of tentacles. I mean, they have what must be hundreds of tentacles that they're putting out across the substrate. Now, these tentacles are also slightly poisonous to fish, uh, so that protects them from when they've got their arms out, they're highly vulnerable otherwise. So they have some toxin that prevents them from being eaten. Anyway, it's just one of the vast variety of polychaetes. There are other ones that filter feed, um, we saw one just before, which was a, a hunter. Um, we've got ones that burrow into the sediment, like earthworms. Um, you know, I mean, they're earthworms, but they're polychaetes that act like earthworms. And it's really quite amazing to look at them under the microscope. Really beautiful creatures. Well, we've got a, quite a few crustaceans uh, in that boulder that we looked at. Um, one of them were these uh, fascinating shrimp called pistol shrimp. Um, and they belong to the genus Alpheus. Now, these shrimp uh, have an enlarged claw in which they can create a popping sound. And they use this uh, territorially, uh, in some cases, uh, when they feed. And so often you'll go out on a, cor a coral reef and if you just stop and, and listen to what's going on underwater, you can hear this uh, popping sound, a, ca a cacophony of popping sound. And it's these little shrimp that are making that noise. So they're really quite fascinating. And we found quite a few of them in the, uh, in, uh, in the boulder. And I suspect there's a couple of different species, but they're really quite beautiful and fascinating creatures. When you look at the surface of the rocks, there's a very fine um, layer of microalgae and a whole series of other organisms, which is referred to as the benthic microalgal layer. Now, the benthic microalgae uh, turn out to be very important in terms of the productivity of coral reefs. It's an extremely productive layer. And uh, if you scratch the, the surface, you can find a whole community of organisms living there. Uh, and this is an important food source for crabs and, and other organisms which graze it uh, at the various uh, uh, levels of the tide. One of the crustaceans you find on coral reefs in, a, in large numbers, large numbers of species, are crabs. And there are crabs that are predators, crabs that eat detritus, and other crabs that are herbivores. And so we found a lot today uh, in amongst the, uh, that rock. And we found some that had uh, paddles on their back legs. We found still others that were 
designed to take little bits of algae and, and camouflage themselves. So these are decorator crabs. Um, and we also found um, hermit crabs, and hermit crabs are very common on coral reefs. And although they're not uh, like the true crabs, they're an Im very, a very important component of the detrital feeders on a, on a coral reef. One of the other major groups on coral reefs are the mollusks. Now, mollusks come in a variety of different forms from octopuses and cuttlefish. We unfortunately didn't find any on our boulder all the way to bivalves like the giant clam to grazers such as the snails. Now we found quite a few species on this boulder, in fact about 10 different species of mollusks. Most of them are grazers which come out and graze on that benthic microalgal layer that covers all the rocks and uh, they along with some of the herbivorous crabs uh, thought to be a big control mechanism for um, preventing that benthic microalgae uh, getting out of control, if you like. But anyway, we'll have a look down the microscope and you can see quite a variety here. We've got a, a little tiny slipper shell, we've got a cowrie, and then we've got some of these whelks, which are probably predatory. In addition to invertebrates, we also found vertebrates. Uh, and we found about 10 little gobies, which are tiny fish that like to live in amongst the branches and they're detrital feeders, they sometimes are particle feeders, uh, but they're a very important part of this uh, community. Now, um, there are also another type of fish called blennies, similar to gobies, and they are very important as herbivores on coral reefs, and they eat the benthic microalgal layer. So quite often you'll go out as the tide's coming in, and you'll see uh, these uh, blennies coming out of their holes and starting to graze on the algae and it's an important part. There's a, a wide range of different interactions going on here and I just want to remind you that was just one boulder of this enormous coral reef. Sponges are a prominent uh, member of the assemblages we had on the rock and in fact they play very important ecological roles on the reef. Uh, they're one of the simplest animals uh, on the planet. They don't have true tissues. They're more a collection of cells working together. Now, um, when we turned over the boulder, there was a whole array of sponges, um, some that were just very drab brown, other ones that were bright red and bright yellow and bright orange. And they're sitting there and filtering uh, particles out of the seawater. And so they just need to be underneath an overhang or somewhere sort of safe from predators like fish, and they can then filter those particles out. But they're really quite uh, fascinating creatures to look at under the microscope because there are a whole myriad of little channels in which the water is flowing through and the particles are being then picked out and consumed by the colony.